And the title for tonight is The Valley of Decision. And I'm here to tell you, if any of you have been listening to any news at all, we are in a valley of decision. And, but you know what? I serve a God that's got it. There's, I, I told my grandson today, I said, sweetheart, you can talk all you want. You and I both know God's got the plan. And, it, and we may not understand all that he's doing and all of the rhetoric and Satan's trying to confuse everybody, but let me tell you, when we get through with this lesson, you better be anchored in him. Because th this, this turbulence is not going to go away. And the aggravation is not going to go away. But you know what? God is all-powerful. And Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've been, been around Pastor Mark too long, I think. Anyway, we're going to be in Joel chapter 3, verses 2 and 12 and 14. And he says, I will gather together all the Gentile nations that were hostile to my people and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, the Lord has judged. And there I will deal with them and enter into judgment with them. There for their treatment of my people, my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. And because they have encroached on my land and divided it up. That's verse 2. Verse 12 says, Let the nations be stirred to action and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge and punish and the surrounding nations put the sickle of judgment for the harvest is ripe. Come tread the gospel with the, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow for the wickedness of the people is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision of judgment. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision when judgment is executed. God is telling them that he is going to be the judge. Now, life is full of choices. Anybody besides me have to make a choice today as to whether to get out of bed or not? We make those choices, don't we? And that affects us in everything we do, and it affects us every day, which means that those choices that we make are not without significance. Therefore, what we choose to do not only affects us, but it affects others as well. And we need to learn that. So what is a decision? What is a decision that you do? Well, it's really to settle or to determine or bring to resolution or resolve and to decide to make up one's mind. Now, has anybody besides me ever made their mind up and then changed it? Yeah, we all have. If we're honest, that's, that's exactly what we do. We make it up, we decide. But I can tell you one thing. Once you have decided to follow Jesus, once you've made up your mind, you keep that anchored in your mind and your heart. Regardless of what happens, you can call it stubbornness, you can call it will, you can call it whatever you want. But once you make up your mind to accept and live for Jesus Christ, don't ever change your mind or your heart. Don't ever change it. Because you see, the Lord, in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says, The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act. And he is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Uh, and by the way, the verses I'm reading are in the Amplified. I love my Amplified. I use the King James, but I love my Amplified because it brings it down to the level that we can understand. You see, when we look at that text, we find that God is sending out a warning to the nations around him. That's what he was doing in Joel. Are we supposed to be warning people about the coming of the Lord? Are we doing it? Some of us yes and some of us no. Are we doing it every day? 
Are we doing it with everybody we meet? You know, sometimes you, you I'm labeled, it, it, you don't, don't have to know me long to know, I'm labeled a fanatic and crazy, holy roller. No, there's some other names they use. But do you know why they label me that? Because Jesus is my conversation. He's what I talk about. And everything that happens, I allude to him because he is in control of my life. And when we learn to do that, think what your witness is. When you're walking through a valley, when you're fighting a demon, when you're fighting a situation and the flesh wants to go with it, they desire, it desires, it wants to have it. What do you think keeps you from going there? A made up mind. There's a song that says, my foot is on the rock and my mind's made up. And when we get to that point in our relationship with the Lord, we will stand and we will bring our bodies into subjection. We will do, and I'm, I'm not talking about just what the flesh wants. I'm talking about sometimes it's, we get a prayer request and we think we need to share it and it turns into gossip. And it does. And we end up hurting people. Because I only know half of what's going on. And sometimes I don't even know that. I got a, a, a text today, a PM today from someone from CEF. I have not a clue as to what's going on, but I begin to pray because, you know, I know who knows what's going on. God knows what's going on. And when I pray through the blood of Jesus Christ, I've got the authority to ask him to oversee that. And we need to learn to do that. But you see, God is not only sending out a warning to the nations that were against him and against Israel, he's sending out a warning for us as well. The, the message that uh, Don Bailey preached about the oil and the virgin, think about it, people. I can't fill your oil up, and you can't take mine. It has to be an individual. And, and when we begin to see Things that are going to happen, the, 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 the captivities, the, the way that people, and I'm just going to say it, the way our government wants to restore things, it's not God's way. It's not what he would have. And it says, it shall be when all things have come on you, the blessings and the cursings which I have set before you, you call them to mind in all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you. That's in Deuteronomy. You see, God places us in places. You're not in this church just by accident, people. God called you here. You're drawn here to hear his word, and you're drawn to hear the true word of God. And, and we need to understand, do you all like, the, like it when, when, when the word hits you? I don't. There's times I'd like to just get up and leave and say, okay, I'm done listening. I'm done. What would happen if I did that? What would happen to Laura Lee? She'd fall, wouldn't she? Why? Because she doesn't want to hear what she needs to do. And that's what we need. We have to return to God. We have to listen and obey we have a really hard time as adults with that word. And you can, you can tell me you don't, and I, it's okay. You can believe that if you want to. But I can tell you right now, you got a hard time with that word because I have a hard time with it. Obedience is not something we enjoy. And I can tell you as well about husbands and wives and obeying and doing what they have asked to do you see we don't we don't like to work in that do we I like to think I Jim God love his heart I told him I was always right he said you just think you are <laughs> and he was right I just thought I was because sometimes I needed to obey what he said to do and you know what when I didn't I always found myself in trouble and he helped he'd bail me out he always did but sometimes I bailed him out too you see, it's a two-way street, but it's not a two-way street when it's to obey the word of God. There is no two-way street. It's God's way or no way. 
And that obedience has to come from your heart. We make up our minds sometimes, and we get ourselves in situations. And if we just learned to listen, we wouldn't get in those situations. But I don't know about the rest of you. In this last 68 years that I've been serving the Lord, I, could, I can't tell you how many situations he's had to say, okay, now are you ready? You've made your mess. I've got to chastise you. But if you'll learn to obey me, I'm going to take you back. And that's called repentance, by the way. <clears throat> and you'll get used to it one of these days. But you see, we have, in Proverbs 1.23, it says that we have turned you at my reproof. Repent, behold, I will pour out my spirit into you. His spirit was promised, and I will make known my words unto you, instructions that you will gain wisdom. How many of you have asked for wisdom? How many of you have been willing to receive God's wisdom? Uh-huh. I agree, Mariah. I agree 100%. Or Miranda. It's Miranda. Well, whichever one you are, honey. We got too many of them in here. Yeah. And, and like I said, this white hair is not just, just fake, trust me. But anyway, how many times have we done, done that and, and then said, oh, okay, God, I know you've told me. But, Lord, could we not just ease this by a little bit? Could I not just make this a little easier for me? And God said, that's not what I said. And you're going to pay a price. But, honey, go right ahead. You know, there's divine will and there's permissive will. And God will allow us to get ourselves in messes. And then he'll say, okay, now what would you like for me to do? Because he says in Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason. We're in this valley of decision. And he's saying, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Think about it. You know, I would like to tell you that sin is something that you won't have to contend with but that's a lie as long as we've got breath in our body and we're on this earth we're going to have to battle against sin and and we're going to have to admit when we do it but do we like to do that you know see we're in that valley of decision we're trying to decide like the song said what we want to do are we going to follow God and and Quite frankly, it's easy to follow him when somebody else is making the decisions. I didn't have any problem following God when I lived in Daddy's house. After 12 years of, at 12 years of age accepting Christ, Daddy was the ruler in our house. I didn't have any problem being good, mostly because if I wasn't, I got spanked. But the bottom line is, I didn't have any problem until that wonderful age of 18 hit. Uh-huh. And then we leave daddy's house. And then our house becomes a place where God has to rule. And it is not an easy transition. Because Proverbs says, one, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded the invitation being extended to him. That's in Proverbs. I forgot to write down the chapter, so I'm sorry. But the bottom line is, when we get to that point, we need to realize that we are in a valley of decision. And you know what? As long as we've got breath, we're going to stay in that valley of decision because we have to make those decisions every day. Every day you make a decision. Every morning when you get out of bed, you decide whether or not you're going to follow God. Every morning when you get out of bed, you have a choice. I can make this a God day or I can make this a Laura Lee day. <laughs> Which day do you think goes best? Yeah, you're right. It's the God day that we need to choose, not the Laura Lee. And, and you don't choose my day. It's your name you need to put there. But, but we, we all make those because in Ezekiel 18.31, he says, Therefore I will judge each of you according to your actions, saith the Lord. Turn from your sins and don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you 
and get for yourself a new heart and a new spirit for why should you die? That death that it's talking about is a spiritual death, not a physical death. And you see, he judges us. He knows. But why do we allow ourselves to ignore the wake-up call that God is giving us right now? If you look at, your, at our nation and you don't see a wake-up call, you're looking at the wrong nation. Because God is trying desperately to wake America up. However, he's trying more desperately to wake up the church. The church has done so many things wrong, and they have slipped into so many areas of compromise that now you become an odd person out because you follow the Bible. I'm telling you, I don't care what anybody tells you, that one of the worst movements that ever happened was seeker-sensitive. You cannot see anywhere in Scripture where God is seeker-sensitive. He didn't change what he wrote, and he didn't change what he said, and he didn't tell us that we could do this, this, and this and still be Christians. That's not what it said. We couldn't accept Jesus. We're not seeker-sensitive. We are seeker-concerned, people, not, to cha- not for them to stay where they're at, but to change them, to give them the word of God. Why do you think this church has been fought so hard in the last 25 years? The battles that we have had that Satan has set up, and I, I, we could write a book, and yet God is faithful. God is faithful, and we need to understand it because there are multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Do you not know that we are in that situation? We are God's anointed people. According to the word of God, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit living in you, and that causes us to be anointed. And if you don't get excited about being anointed day by day by day, there's something wrong because you're not seeking the one that's anointed you. That Holy Spirit is not active in you because God desires that we not turn away from him, that we turn to him when we're in the valley of decision. But what do we do when we're in a valley and we've got to make a decision? We call everybody and say, what do you think I ought to do, Barb? Joyce, how do you think I ought to handle this? (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's good advice. You know, we do that. Lindsay, how do you think I ought to handle this person? We do it all. Ashley, we do it all the time. And you know what? When somebody comes to you and says, I've, I'm in, a, a, in the situation, I need to make a decision. All you need to do is say, I'll pray for you. We do not need to know what that decision is. We do not need to know what that situation is. We, it's not up to us. We just simply pray. Like I told you, the the, the text I got today, I have not a clue as to what's going on, but I know they need prayer. And I know a God that already knows they need prayer. God knows when you're in that valley. God knows when you need prayer. And you see, we, we have... We're at the end time harvest for the word of God. And God is calling the lost world to repentance. And he's calling the church back to him. No more playing around. No more just letting the emotion rule. No more just letting all of that happen. We need to get to where we are anchored in him without emotion and without any situation. We need to get to where we are because right now our nation is in that decision. And honey, I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care who's in Senate, and I don't care who's in House of Representatives. The God I serve is the one that's in control. And he is the one that's going to lead and guide and direct. He is the one that's going to say yay, nay, or whatever. And I don't care who they put on the cabinet either. Because God knows what's going on. 
And we are called to do what? Pray and follow God. Exactly. The Bible tells us to pray for those who have rule over you. It definitely does. Now, I don't care whether you like him or dislike him. I, I, I would like to have some duct tape for his mouth, but that's my opinion. <clears throat> okay, next. Um, but my job as a Christian is to pray for him. My job is to pray for the congressman and the Senate. My job is to pray for the Supreme Court, not to second guess or try and figure out or do all this other stuff. It's to pray that God's will be done. Because what happens if we don't pray? I can tell you what happens if we don't pray. They took prayer out of schools because we didn't pray. We didn't stand up. We refused to listen when 9-11 hit. Man, six weeks after that, you couldn't find a chair. You couldn't find a seat in church. And look at it now. Look at it now. Most people have totally forgotten about that. There is not only uh, a short time for America, but for all the people on the earth. It's not just a short time here for America. I'm concerned about America because that's my country. And that's the one I, I am in, and that's the one I love. But not more than I love my God. And whatever happens, happens. But all over the earth, in, in every country, their government is in valleys of decision. And we need to remember to pray. Because how long will we turn a deaf ear and not hear God? How long will, will we, like Israel, get in our comfort zone and stay there? And we, how long will we live where everything seems to be going well? Anybody besides me ever got up in the morning and it looked like a great day, and by the, bottom, by the end of the evening, the bottom had fallen out of your world? Uh-huh. And how are you anchored when that bottom falls out? Because I'm here to tell you, we live long enough, your bottom's going to fall out. I can tell you the times mine's fall out, and I can tell you how far I fell, but that's a whole other story. Because we have become, we've become complacent, very comfortable. We've become self-centered. Lord, I deserve this or that. Do you know what you get if you, des- if you got what you deserve, do you know what you get? Death and hell, exactly, if we got what we deserve. But because of the blood of Jesus, I don't get what I deserve. But when I'm making a decision about what I'm going to be doing, I need to remember that. Is what this decision that I'm making, is it going to glorify God? Is it going to test, strengthen my testimony in the world I'm living in, in the people that I've witnessed to? You know, my children can tell you the first time I apologized to them for something that I had done. And every once in a while, my lovely daughter, God love her heart, reminds me, you know, mother, sometimes you need to apologize. And she's right. Just because I'm her mother doesn't keep me from being a Christian. And it doesn't keep me from admitting when I'm wrong for what I've said to her. And as I told Barb tonight, we can stand toe-to-toe and argue because she's a sissin. But, <laughs> but, and she's just like her daddy. But we can also finish that argument and go out to lunch together and have a good time. We don't hold any grudges. We need to learn that. We need to stop thinking that because somebody looks at me cross-eyed, they're offend- I, I, they, they, they don't like me or they're offended me. Okay. Let me tell you right now, when things happen, we need to stand on the word of God. And don't worry about that room over there. They've got it. If you've ever had a whole bunch of boys, God love them and help them. It's my opinion, but nobody asked me. Okay. We are so self-centered and self-satisfied. We're satisfied where we are. Well, I'm a Christian, and I've got my, 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 my heavenly things settled. But is that what we're called to do? You remember when I did devotion, most of you weren't here, 
There's two commandments in the Bible. You can find them in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The will of God is that you love the Lord your God with all your what? Heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's it. That's his will. The second part of that is that you love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so when I'm making this decision, what's that going to do to my testimony? Especially if it's what I want. And the way that things are and the way that we ignore, it, it grieves the very heart of God. Do you realize how many times we hurt him? How many times he said, I've brought you up out of this mess and you're going right back into it. He said that to me several times, and I pray that I never do it. And unfortunately, we start to become like the church of Laodicea in the book of Revelation when God said, I know your works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Oh, would thou work cold or hot so that thou would, that, so that you're not lukewarm. Because if we're neither cold nor hot, he's going to spew us out of our mouth. Do you know how we get cold or hot? Either way. Put a program in. One that's not been prayed over. And I'm going to use peanut butter and Jesus. That was prayed over long before it started. And every Saturday that you go out every month. We get reports of people wanting prayer. We get reports of people asking us about. We get reports about the children that come here. We get that report. That, why? Because it's anointed of God. We can't just have a program. We can't just, uh, and I can use another one. CEF is prayed over too. Good news clubs. And I'm telling you, every afternoon, I'm going to say between 3.30 and 5 o'clock, you should be praying for Good News Club. Amen. You should be praying for the kids that are in there. Why? Because Satan uses so many things in our schools, and our kids come home with so much. We need to be in the army of the Lord, and that's a decision we have to make, and we're in that valley of decision. You see, in in Matthew 15, 8, it says, The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Mark 7, 6 said, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you, hypocrites, play actors, pretenders, as it is written in Scripture, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We honor him by the way we talk, and we get into the programs. Oh, we do. Oh, yeah. But what's in our heart? The will of God in your heart is that you love him. And you know what? It took a long time for some people to understand that I love God more than I love them. But that's what I'm called to do. And I have them in my life because I love God. And God places people in our lives for us to love and be Christian too. And honey, if you're not a Christian in your home, you're wasting your time. Your family needs to see Christ in you. Those are the people you're closest with. Does that mean you'll never make a mistake or say something you shouldn't say? Absolutely not. But it does mean that you will admit it. It does mean that you will repent because your family that you love needs to see Christ in you. And I'll give you a little tip. It's a whole lot easier to love them through Christ than it is to love them in the natural. I, again, learned that the hard way. I, mm, widowed with three kids for four years. Whew, it was Lord either help me love them or I'm going to kill them, one or the other. There wasn't any in between. It was either love him through Christ or kill him. Fortunately, I didn't kill him or I'd be in jail. Anyway, the bottom line is we need to learn to love through Christ. Because you see, a lot of people are trying to build their spiritual walk on a corrupt ground. On a ground that's uneven. Because when we just honor him without him being in our hearts... We are in the valley of decision. 
Because we decide, I can say this and nobody will know it. You don't know my heart. But you know what shows of your heart? That outward appearance. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And sometimes if you just listen to somebody, you can tell where their heart's at. And it's an interesting thought. And you know what? Don't, don't say anything. Put them on your prayer list. Don't try and change them. Put them on your prayer list. God can get to that heart. We need to understand that because we, we, we mingle and we, we try and, and, and intermittently be with the world. I got a lot of acquaintances, most of them outside the church. But my friends and the people I bond with are Christians. And, it's, and I can witness to them. These people come in the office, and they know I'm a prayer warrior, and they'll ask for prayer. And I, there was a time I wanted to say, well, if you just straighten up, you could pray for yourself. But I didn't. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I was good. I said, okay, let's pray. <laughs> and we have to do that. Even though we know there's errors, we still have to pray, and we still have to do it God's way. We, got, we have got to seek the wisdom of God. He said in James 1, 5, if any lacks wisdom, let him ask. Do we ask God for wisdom in this situation? Do we ask God to take care of it? Or do we just make up our minds? I know how to handle this. And, you know, I can tell you how I walk through some things. But you'll walk different through them because the effect of those on you is different than the effect on me. We're all different. It's a whole lot different when you're 30, 35, 40 than it is when you're 75 or 80. Trust me. Life is a whole lot different as we get as we age. We need to have our, our lives, regardless of our chronological age, we need to have our spiritual age in line with the word of God that says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. He didn't say I couldn't be nice to them. He didn't say I couldn't say hello. He said I needed to come out from the world and be separate. And you don't need to broadcast it. You don't need to tell somebody how holy you are because you're not holy then. You start bragging about being holy, you're not holy. You start bragging about being humble, you're not humble. You start bragging about what God has done and God's not done. The blessings of God have so much more than material things. Oh, the peace, the comfort, the strength. The courage, all of those are so much more than the material things we have. Number one. Number two, all that's going to rust, and the molds go, and the moths are going to get it. Anybody besides me ever had their clothes eaten by moths? Yeah. And you'd think, oh, my gosh. No. All that's going to rust. It's not important. And it's not that you can't have those things, but don't let those things have you. You know, we like nice things, and, and he expects us to be nice and orderly, but not that we are consumed with it. I told, I don't know who I told, I, I've got to quit coveting these nice clothes that people wear because it's like, man, I'd like to have that. And the Lord's saying, why? Well, you go because we want it, and sometimes we're drawn away by our eyes. But as we seek, Lord, Matthew 6, you all should be able to say this with me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things. When we seek God, uh, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the ways of the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know why it says desires of your heart? Underline that delight yourself in the Lord. When you start delighting yourself in the Lord, you want what God wants in your life, not what you want in your life. And you want your flesh to be satisfied with his presence. Now, I have a, I went to the, I had the doctor's appointment today and she looked at me and she said, I have a suggestion for you. 
I said, okay. She looked at me. She said, I can tell from looking at your, your results, you like bread. Okay, I like bread. She said, well, let me give you a tip. You need to stay away from bread because of your glucose. It wasn't real high. And she was very understanding. And she said, and I'll give you another tip. Oh, man. You like sweets. I said, well, not all sweets. <laughs> she said, let me see if I can guess. You like cookies and donuts and cake. And you like candy. Not chocolate, I said. <laughs> and she said, Laura Lee, there are so many other kinds than chocolate. You see, she could tell. From the report of my, as you see my arm, my blood test. She knew what was going on. And she was giving me a tip. Let me tell you what God's word does for you. It does not give you a tip or a suggestion. It gives you a commandment. And when he says, touch not the unclean things, that's exactly what he means. When he says to come out and be a separate people, that is exactly what he means. And we need to learn that we need to obey that. Now, is it always comfortable to be separate? Mm -mm. We don't like it. But you see, God is looking for a remnant that will stand in God's timetable and realize that this is the time to be declaring the need for Jesus. If ever our country needed to hear that Jesus is, is what they need. It is today. It is now. And the question, the other question is, is your house in order? Is it ready? And I mean really ready to meet the Lord? Have you said like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord? You know, my house is just me, but I need to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, that needs to be my commandment. You know, sometimes we forget or we forsake what he's told us. But when he tells us that, again, it's a commandment. And, and to comfort you all, I'm on my, on my, I've got one page left. And then we can go. You, you can quit listening. Okay. But you see, the Bible says when the earthly tabernacle of the house shall dissolve, we have another building that is eternal in heaven. I'm a citizen here, but my citizenship is in heaven. And it needs to stay. And you know how it stays there? I keep my name on the book of life. I obey what God says to obey, to, for me to obey. We have to have a made-up mind that I am going all the way with Jesus. Don't keep one foot in the church and one foot in the world. You'll be the most miserable person there is. Guilt will eat you up. Uh, yes. And we've all been tempted to do that. But the song we sang tonight about I have decided to follow Jesus, that's a decision you have to make. And if you need to sing that song every day, sing that song every day. Because there is no turning back. When you give Jesus up, you've lost the ark of safety. And how many people do you know that have left him and gotten themselves in messes? That ark of safety, I call it an umbrella. Because we've got the word of God. We've got church, we've got praise, we've got worship, we've got blessings, but the whole thing is under an umbrella that is the ark of safety when we stay with God, when we stay where he wants. You know, I've been lied on, but I've decided to follow Jesus. Let them lie. It's okay. You've heard me say this too. Truth and time always come together. And be sure your sin will find you out when you lie about it. You see, because Jesus is our rock. That's the rock that he was telling Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. Our church is built on Jesus Christ and the foundation of him. That's the one that's built on. Then, the, and then we say, though none go, none go with me still, I will follow. You know, the family won't go sometimes, but still I'm going to follow. 
Friends won't go, but I'm going to follow. And I've lost some friends. But were they really friends? Exactly. And you know what? When you lose that friend, Satan loses an, instru loses an instrument that he can use against you, people. Learn to recognize and discern in the spirit who Satan's using against you. Because this valley of decision is going to be continual until breath leaves this body. I am going to have to make decisions. The church won't always follow, and we, they, we've got that example today. You can go to any church you want to go to and tell you what you want to hear. You don't have to go far. Uh, when you come here, you're not going to hear what you want to hear. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll give you the word of God, and then the choice is yours. You get to make the decision. And let me tell you, if, you serve, if you've been a Christian one day, you've been a Christian too long to turn back or go back out in the world. You've been a Christian too long to begin to wonder what God is doing. Don't let Satan aggravate the flesh man till he just gives up. Let your spirit man be your leader. Because until you've stayed up and stopped up and preached up and prayed up for the cause of Christ, you are weak until we do that every day. Every day we have to pray for it. Every day, I'm a disciple of Jesus. Do I look like a disciple that you see on TV? Uh, no, but I am a disciple of Jesus. Why? We're all disciples because we're following his word and we're living his way that he wants. And when he comes for his own, man, I want to be ready. I want to be ready to go. There are three things that I know as I'm closing that I lean on when I'm in my valley of decision. And sometimes I forget all that's happened in my life, and then I remember to preach to myself. The first thing I know is that Jesus was with me, and he has all power. He will never leave me. You can find that in Hebrews 13, 5. At the end of it, and this is the Amplified, it says, I will never under any circumstance desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. I'm in the very hollow of his hand, and ain't nobody can take me out of it. I belong to him. The second thing I know is that when I'm in the valley, and people, you're going to be in the valley. God is at the bottom of that valley, undergirding his everlasting arms are there. We're not going to walk on the mountaintops. And you can read about this in Deuteronomy 33. When Moses couldn't go over into the promised land and he was blessing the children of Israel and he was talking about the mounts, you know, Mount Hord, Mount Sinai, Mount all of them. In verse 33, he wrote these words. The eternal God is your refuge and dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms. He drove out the enemy from before you and he has destroyed those that want to come against you. Think about it. When I'm in the valley and at my lowest, God's hands are under me. He's holding me. Think about that. Regardless. And Moses had disobeyed. But God was still there. God was still there. And number three. God has given to every man a measure of faith. Given us enough faith to overcome whatever comes in our lives, whether it's illness, whether it's financial, whether it's times of unrest, whether it's something the flesh wants that it shouldn't have, like lorely eating carbs and sweets, whether, regardless of what it is, we have enough faith for this because Romans 12, 3 says, for by the grace of of God given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think more highly of himself. 
and of his importance and ability than he ought to think. But to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has a portion to each degree of faith and purpose designed for the service to each Christian. Stand with me as we close. And the kids begin to run. Woo! Father God, we just thank you for this night. I pray, Lord, that this word finds a resting place in our hearts. Bring us back. Bring the men back tomorrow night. Bring us back on Sunday morning for Sunday school. And let us begin to worship you every day as we pray according to your word, your will, and your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I told you I'd get done in time. They didn't believe me. Can you understand that? Bye, Nana. Just a mention of your name. Flowers grow, deserts bloom again. Just the mention of your name. Jesus, just the mention.